Okay, so this is video three in building our FTC robot in Autodesk Inventor Assembly. And the last video I left you here. And so right now I'm just going to go ahead and finish constraining the motor. Uh, instead of going over there and making a hassle for yourself, you can just select this. I'm lining up with this. Um, the two circular pieces. So that's going to finish that. And then um, adding motion is pretty simple from there. We'll just add these right here and here. OK, so that's finished. Now if this tire spins, it's going to spin here. If this tire spins, it'll spin there. OK, so we don't have a whole lot of other pieces to put onto this. We have another small assembly I made. Um, here we go axle ends so we'll put down four of these guys for each of our wheels and now we're going to build a small assembly to put inside this so here what we're going to do we're going to open a new assembly again because let's say I have the front tires but I don't want gears on them because there's no reason to have a gear there so I'm going to place down some parts that we're going to need we'll need a wheel and we're going to need, what else do we need? So let's put down a wheel. We also need an axle. OK, we need an axle and an axle clamp. And we also need a spacer, one of those plastic spacers. go and one more piece whoops uh, place we need the brass bearings so here's the new brass bearing and that pretty much finishes it we can add some screws in a little later since this is an assembly f for our larger piece so we're just gonna you know constrain this the same way we did on the other pieces using mates on the circular parts and um, using a lot of insert. So here we're just going to insert this here, done, right, okay, this goes, oh, we don't want to do that, uh, whoops, okay, so I mean not a whole lot to do here, this is, this is pretty standard, we're gonna, just going to insert this. Yay. <laughs> well, sometimes you keep doing the same thing wrong. And you just have to keep trying it. So here we go. That goes there. This goes here. That is done. And now this piece. Well, we're also going to add some screws. Because we can. So open these ones. These are the ones we're going to need. And we'll attach these guys in right here and right here. And you can just play around with those to see exactly what they do. I used them differently there because I selected different edges. Um, so we also want to make sure that this lines up. Right now these screws are not going through that. So we're just going to you know, use the mate again on the circular portion of the screw and the circular portion that and so now they're attached and last thing we're gonna make sure this axle is flush with the tire there we go so there's our little assembly that we made uh, so now you just need to save this save as let's save this as assembly I already have an assembly five, assembly six. So save this as assembly six. I also have it saved to something else here. Um, so now we have assembly six saved. We're gonna open our old assembly, which is this one. 
Okay, and now we're going to place down assembly 6. Okay, so there we just built an assembly so we could put it in here. And, you know, maybe if you were just going to do it one time, yeah, it might not be worthwhile to go ahead and create the piece as an assembly. But we're going to assume this is a pretty basic standard setup that you have for a tire or a wheel. So I, I was kind of assuming that you'd go around and do this again. Uh, I mean, that's it just saves you a little bit of time later to make the assembly. So I'm just putting in all these little axle clamps. And this doesn't really do a whole lot for the functionality of the robot, but if you're really nitpicky like me, it completes the design. Okay, so now those are done. Uh, your robot frame is pretty much complete. We're just going to add a couple of special things into it, like your NXT brick. So here's our NXT brain. We'll plop this guy down. And what else do we want? We want a motor controller. And oh, sure, we can do a motor wiring shield. We can do that. Motor controller. Sure, we got both of those. Okay, let's find the servo controller too. Just because. Servo controller. There we go. And let's also place down a switch. I wonder what the switch is called. There it is. Okay, power switch. There, so put that down. Okay, so the whole point of this was to make a robot that's really low to the ground. And I also forgot the battery. Let's forget that. Uh, so that's why everything here is going to be right up next to the bottom. So for the battery here, we're going to select this and mate this face here to this face up here. Okay, and then we're going to mate, and then we're going to use a special one for tangent. We haven't used this one yet, so pay attention. Uh, as we open this, it's pretty simple. I mean, you're putting a circle up to an edge. So here is outside, and here's inside. We want outside, so we're going to select this circle and this edge right here. And so now it's lined up with that, and it's flush. So this can still move back and forth that way because we haven't constrained it there. Uh, so we'll do that next. We'll make this constraint. We'll use another one of these just to show you again. You could also do this with zero degrees. So select that. OK, now our battery is constrained mostly and it's in the front uh, if you ever need to if you ever have something constrained the way you want to and you just don't know what to do to constrain it completely you can always just go and ground it okay whoa it's not going to move anymore yay okay uh the way this was designed this will fit in here or we'll actually we'll put the servo controller in there believe that's how I want it. Let me check. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna put the servo controller in there, and we'll put the motor on the controller on the back side. And these are pretty simple, but I'll go ahead and do these real fast. Mates. This side to the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to mate a 
this edge here to this edge over here. Okay, so our motors, or our controller is pretty well set in there. And realistically, you would probably attach this with Velcro. Um, but I don't have Velcro on this, so we're not going to do that. So, I mean, you just put that in there, and let's say, hey, well, realistically, this can't be right up against the edge, okay, because you need to put stuff in there. So let's edit this mate. We'll, like, put in 0.2 or 0.3. Okay, and that's fine. So we're gonna ground this guy so it doesn't move. And uh, we'll just assume that you did that with the Velcro in if you were actually building the robot. Uh, for these, I mean, you're just gonna, again, insert them into a, just a slot here. And I mean, I'm not going through where exactly these need to be placed, but you know, somewhere in the vicinity is probably right. Um, so I just messed up something there. So we're gonna make this parallel with that again, so we can use our 90 degrees or zero degrees. And we have a couple pieces left. For the switch, we're just going to mate that onto the bottom edge of this piece. Okay, and then we're going to make this zero degrees with this side over here. So this, turn that direction. Okay, so our switch is pretty much where we want it. That's good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ground it because it's not completely constrained yet. This piece is a little tricky because my motors were designed before it. So it's going to be off. So maybe we shouldn't place this piece. We're just going to delete that. Um, you can just kind of assume where that's going to go in the actual build. Hmm. That doesn't work. Okay, so for this piece, we're just going to constrain it by selecting this edge and this edge. So, I accidentally put it underneath, but it's not a big deal. We can just change that. Okay, so, and that's the basic idea.